Hello Internet. What's up? I can tell you what's up here. <coughs> I'm continuing on my uh, data stream refactoring. And one of the next topics that I want to deal with is the error context reporting. So we already have something in place that is generating error messages and error contexts like the one you see above here. So that's the status quo. And I'm currently thinking about what I actually want to have. Now there's a lot of information in the messages as they are currently printed. So that's fine. It's just that the presentation of the information is a bit confusing. And I want to make this more useful. First, you should understand which parts the information consists of. It's uh, three different parts. We have first a kind of hierarchical uh, context that tells us in which stream we currently are and in which substream within the streams and so on. So those are those, those lines and they are already a bit confusing because you see first line is good, we see which file we are reading, but then it says limited substream only tells us how much is left. Uh, then we have another context line generated by a derived class from the substream, limited substream. And then we get another limited substream within that. And this nesting is not really understandable here. So it's quite confusing. So that's the first part is this hierarchical context. Uh, then we get something like a flat context that actually gives us uh, the position of the problem, or at least the approximate position of the problem um, in the context of the stream data. So that's also fine. Here I decided to give it in a hexadecimal presentation because there are not too many printable characters near the location of the problem. So that's fine, except that the formatting could be better. So the lines are getting rather long and uh, we currently don't do anything to make this readable. So there's maybe some, some work to invest here. There is also the question how we, how we get the context data. And currently we just take what is in the stream buffer and of course we might be out of luck if, if we are currently at the end of the stream buffer, which does not mean that we are at the end of the stream, but just about at the end of the portion that happens to be buffered in memory, then we, we wouldn't see a lot of context here in the forward direction. And so maybe we will want to teach our streams that if it is any way feasible uh, with let's say with a limited effort to get more context that they can do that. So that's, that's the thing about the flat context. The final part is the actual error messages and uh, these have nothing to do with the stream subsystem. So there's nothing to address here now. Um, so I think I can remove that because we are not dealing with that. So I also will remove it here. And currently I'm thinking about um, how this, how we could format this in a way that makes, makes it easier to understand. One thing I would like to do is to represent the nesting of substreams semi-graphically by indentation. I'm thinking about that. Uh, the other thing is 
I think I would like something like a bit of mathematical interval notation for denoting the, the extension of the stream. Uh, the, the extent of the stream and the relative uh, positions. It's a bit of a complicated topic because depending on which streams you have nested within each other, you might have relative or absolute addressing because normally for files we do absolute addressing in the file. So all the positions that you see here, even those of the nested streams are relative uh, to the whole file, which I think it's, is most useful for debugging. On the other hand, if you have, for example, a compressed stream, this will have, since this does not map one-to-one -to, -one to the bytes in the file, this will have its own relative offsets. And what I'm considering is that in such a case that we would break the indentation and say, for example, here in, or, or let's say compressed, data stream, let's say with inflate algorithm or something. And then we would do, um, then we would do a new interval notation for the, the substreams of this one relative to, relative to, to this one. So, Actually, we could make that clearer by putting a zero here and also here. I'm not sure about that because it, and this of course makes our, adds lines to our context messages. What would also be interesting, of course, is uh, the, the length of the file, for example, which is also something that we could easily get in case of an error. We could just fetch the length of the file, uh, because why not? We just should be prepared that we maybe it doesn't work because we have a problem with the file and then we, we wouldn't be able to get the length, but normally it should we should have a gracefully falling back way to get the length because it might be it might be useful if we could for example say that this is this is a 300 megabyte file or whatever that extends to, and here, uh, if, if we go for such a semi-graphical representation, it would of course make sense to, it would make sense probably to care about alignment of these things. question is do we report do we report the location this is actually redundant here but this is not redundant the distance from the beginning so I'm thinking about showing the distance something like this so the relative offset from from the beginning of this stream show it something like this And then it's difficult to say how we how how should we format this. I mean, I, I'm just 
playing this through in my mind before I implement something because maybe this will get so complicated that I don't want to do it. One problem that I also see here is that lengths lengths are a bit difficult to show because we have this always the we have always the the position in the middle. I mean, we could some do something very extreme and always always show the whole length. And then only below. So we could do something like this. We could show the whole length. Just brainstorming here. So let's get rid of this for now. We could show the whole length and then only um, relative positions here. Uh, this would actually be redundant. So we could only show it would be would make sense to only show it in the last in the last one let's let's just invent some numbers here and just put these numbers will not be consistent now that I put here just playing with the idea a bit how this would look like okay no uh, actually what I want what I was talking about is to have only the overall length here And if we really would align these things, I mean, this would look something like that, that we show that this is actually nested not only on the left side, but, but nested also on the right side. Okay, if you do it like this, we could actually make this more compact, probably. The point is, so one thing is that this kind of report could be extremely useful in debugging, but could be very confusing to, a, to, a, to an end user. So, so we might again just just saying this in brainstorming fashion, we might want to have different modes of report
to have a verbose and non-verbose mode of reporting and the verbose mode would do something like I'm sketching here now what I don't like is that in the middle here we have the arrow position and we have the lengths and they I mean the length has the, the position had the, has the add to mark it as a position but it's still somewhat overloaded with these So in our visual language, the arrows arrows would all always be deltas, so, so interval lengths, uh, distances, would be distances. Yeah, that's the question where we would align this if we would go for outside here also and then so here I would actually have the whole file length but this I mean this could be just like Like this and here we could have the file name then so we could so my idea would be that we have a column here that actually describes this the stream so this would be the pdf file this would be the excel object stream and this would be something inside let's just invent something that could be the jvic2 globals object or something This would then be redundant. Maybe it would be better to have these actually actually at the beginning of the line. that would maybe make it even digestible for a for a non-developer because a non-developer could just ignore all these numbers and just see okay there is some problem in a pdf file and something with jvic2 or so I mean, this is, of course, a very verbose way to very verbose way to specify position. A lot of the data is redundant in the sense that you can calculate some numbers from others, but. I find it always so convenient to directly report things that can be calculated easily by the code. Uh, 
I'm just not so sure about the reporting of the lengths here. They somehow they somehow seem look odd to me. So how would it look like? Let's just make a copy for brainstorming. How would it look like if we get rid of the length? We either just have we either just have some lines or arrows to make this more visually connected because otherwise this would be very disconnected parts. And maybe if this signifies the streams, we should use a different visual notation for the arrows. It's just that we don't want to, them to look like negative numbers. So how about using dots for the streams? Because I mean, dots are already established as a symbol for da 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 ellipses, data left out. Was I'm not so sure about this here. Should we use the same notation here for the inclusive and exclusive end? I mean, the, the thing is, as soon as we do that, that we don't, do not report the, the, the overall length here. I mean, the length is easy to calculate. We just subtract these two numbers. If we had a, have a lot of screen space, we could even, and if, if it's not starting at zero, we could even report the length somewhere here. And this is something I was thinking about a bit that I think, I mean, it, it's, it's probably different when you, when you write a compiler and design the error messages of a compiler, it's a very different situation because you expect to get error messages a lot. So all the time when you compile, most of the times when you compile, you expect to get error messages and you expect to get multiple of them. So it's, it's very different than this case where we have this kind of PDF parser and, and JBEG2 decoder and so on, where we actually expect to almost never see error messages. We, we expect error messages only in the rare cases where you feed invalid or so either accidentally or maliciously invalid data to the parser. So it's a, it's a very different design problem than designing error messages for a compiler. So for example, I'm not sure that compactness of the error message is so important and also I mean Screens are getting bigger all the time. Fonts are getting smaller on the screen. My own screen is not <laughs> very representative of that. Um, because I have a rather old system here with a small notebook screen um, and I'm using a large font. So that's not very representative. Typically you would have lots of real estate on the screen to show text like error messages. I'm still not too happy about 
using two lines per nested strain here. Not that we will have a lot of nesting going on. We, I think usually something like two to three levels should be all that is going on. Still, I would I would probably feel happier if we could if we could combine everything Yeah, we would also have some I'm really not so sure how to line these things up. Maybe they should all be lined up. This could be a rather large one here. So, I mean, we could be using, we could, we could left align them and use some of the space. Something like like that, maybe. I'm not sure if that is total overkill. It would it would need some some coding effort to do the the table alignment, but not too much I think that's not rocket science to do question is just do I want something like that Uh, let's briefly mark what kind of table tops we would have so where there would be some alignment going on So here we would probably have some right alignment going on. Here's some left alignment.
And then the question is, do, do those need any kind of alignment or will they just always add indent or indentation or out temptation or whatever the, the thing at the trading end is called? I think, I mean, for debugging, I think something like that would be very handy. Let's go back to this. Yeah, I mean, the, the status quo is really not nice because it's it's confusing to both. It's very confusing to the end user and it's also very hard to use for the developer. So it's kind of the worst of both worlds. And I think I like the single line versions much better than the double line versions. So I think let's get rid of the double line versions, even if they have an easier time representing the overall length of substreams. I'm getting an interesting idea thinking about this. So these double line versions, yeah, they are not so nice. And I think the alignment really, the alignment really makes a large difference. It's just the question is, how large will the numbers get? With large numbers, it's always, always also a question, should you do some kind of digit separation? I think in this case probably not because these numbers are not that meaningful to the human anyway. They are more something that you would click and copy and paste and do some to some kind of calculator or debugging tool. I'm not sure how, how useful the number left is. It could be very useful if it's small. If it's large, it doesn't tell you a lot. If it's small, like if it says, yeah, we are two bytes from the end, that could be quite useful. The large ones are probably not really useful. So the question is, should we have some kind of threshold and only print the small if it, only print it if it's small because otherwise otherwise it's quite useless anyway. The ones at the the offset from the beginning is probably more generally useful. Actually, this would be, this one would be redundant because this one would always be the same as, as this one. So the question is, do we need the middle part here at all? Or could we, could we do something like, say, only put a visual marker here? Do 
because we will probably repeat the position again anyway. We will have something like this down here anyway. Okay, but this will probably only be... That's the question, if this will repeat, if this will only be with reference to the last, the last innermost nested stream that has absolute positions, or will it also report with respect to the file? But anyway, we could gain some compactness by doing it, by doing it this way, right? Yeah, the question is, I, I don't know which symbol would in, be nice. Should we, should we use an exclamation mark or should we an add symbol for location, something? That doesn't work so well, I think. The question is also, we will often have, actually, we will often have errors that occur at the end of one of the substreams. And maybe even these will, these will collide, so these will be at the same, at the same location. This could very well happen. That's, that would maybe be a nice way to immediately spot, okay, we are at the end or close to the end or something like that. And for the nesting, we could check, we could check whether we really have a non-zero delta or not. That would not be a big problem. Those lines would actually be kind of right aligned here. They concept conceptually they extend to the right from here. Well, so we would, we would have something like reading files such as us. This we should probably we have, should have a, a short string here because the, the file name can be very long so we shouldn't put anything after the file name i think and then we could have some additional then we could have an inflate stream that starts starts its own coordinate system That would start its own coordinate system. Uh, 
I'm still not sure if this is complete overkill or whether this is the nicest error reporting in the world. This is another topic, so let's for now not think too much about how do we do the flat context reporting. That's a topic in its own right. <clears throat> I think I would just, as a developer, I would be thrilled to get these kind of error messages because especially these offsets, so where the data structures, or actually th those are substreams right now. So where the substreams start, this can be extremely helpful if you then go to a hex editor or something and you try to understand what's going on. Th this is very, very helpful. Also these, the offsets from the start of these structures can be nice to have, especially if there are small numbers. So I still think that as these numbers can be calculated from the others, that maybe we should only print them if they are below a certain threshold, because they are typically most useful when they are small. When they are large, they don't help you a lot. And you could calculate them anyway. So that's just a side idea. So I think as the developer and, and for a long, long time, probably I will be the, the main or only user of the code. I, I think I would be thrilled to have something like that. If we work out uh, the table alignment, this could actually be something that we can nicely use for other stuff also. We could have some moderate indent here for the for stuff that is going on within the coordinate system. And one idea that I had before is, I mean, currently we are talking about streams here, but it would be really interesting because inside the streams, you often have nested data structures that are not modeled as streams. And maybe, Maybe it could be a nice idea to hook these things actually into this kind of error reporting so that we get similar lines like these ones that we get for the streams, to get similar lines like these ones for substructures, for sub-data sub structures. I'm just thinking about whether we could use something like this for streams. That would be funny. Maybe too cute. So we could have something like we could have something like um, JB two text text region segment here. So let's just write text segment. Could have, could have something like that. And maybe some small, some small indication, some small indication for us as the developer that this is not a stream, but but a data structure by doing maybe a different kind of errors or something. I don't know. A 
do the streams with the yeah whatever just an idea so we could i probably won't do this right now i'm just thinking about but we could hook we could hook we could hook scoped things into this kind of error reporting that would be very very nice whenever we have some kind of hierarchical data structures and files uh, to get reports like this in which segment we are actually in the thing is just you usually then have extra information and the, the question is where to where to put the extra information for example like the segment number Would this be something that you put here, like segment number five, page number Okay, and to think quickly about how this could be implemented, because I mean, these will be kind of recursive calls where from inside out, we, from inside out, so actually from, from down here, from inside out, from the mo most innermost nested stream, we call outward to the context reporting functions. And so we would probably do first one one complete um, one complete recursion to collect to collect information that we need for the alignment. Then do the alignment, and then do a second a second recursion that actually renders things into text. That's one option. The second option is we could do only one recursion, but buffer everything that we need to align. Buffer everything such that we can post align it. Probably the, the first option is cleaner and easier to implement if so that you do two passes, one for querying all the all the widths. This would probably be not such a big deal. Just needs to be cleanly laid out what we want to have. And I won't implement it today, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too big a deal. It's just I'm still not entirely sure what I want here, but I mean, I think for for the developer, this is all fine. I think thinking again about the end user. I mean, I think the having some words at the left side makes it more acceptable to an end user i mean error messages are generally not not really well received understandably by end users 
then you have those end users who do not understand any error message anyway so there is no point in making it so there's no point in targeting that group with your error messages because they just noticed that something doesn't work and they uh, probably curse you and everything else and then there are the the sophisticated users they are an interesting target group so how can we make their life easier it depends a lot in which context this is dis displayed because i think you can do a lot for example with coloring if it is if you display a large error message like this and for example you put just the actual the actual error text at because this is all context information and at the end you have some actual error message so error blah went wrong that you if you only print this one in red for example this can be extremely helpful already to focus focus attention on that I also like to print that as the last part because if you're on the comment line this will be the one part that is easiest to see the last part and if you print it in red for example and you print let's say the context in gray and so on you can do a lot a lot for the readability Also, if you if you show this in the dialog box later, um, uh, a little coloring can go a long way, I think, to make to make such a message more digestible. And and it's just, I mean, the the question is always: you could also, of course, put the error message at the top with some spacing, and then put all the details. This is not nice for the command line. But this could be preferable in a dialog box, for example, to have the details folded away or the details not even folded away, maybe just have them below. So that's a good that's a good reason to to keep the, these context parts somewhat separate one could even order them like this then for example I thought probably this makes more sense ordering like this so to keep these parts a bit separate that for example in the graphical user interface you can read you can present the information a bit differently than just on the command line that could make a lot of sense of course i mean how you present this information this is an open-ended topic Because, for example, context, yeah, context could be scrollable, for example. Or something. There are endless possibilities that you can take this. So we will need to to limit our scope here. Okay, I think I will, for now, I will leave it at this point of brainstorming. So, yeah, this is not a good version. The 
this was the GUI version, kind of. So I think I found out at, at least a few things that I want these single lines. Yeah. Uh, let's leave it at that for now. Let's see. Do we have something simple that we can, so that we can do a bit of coding right now for something, just to get something done? Actually, a lot, a lot of the remaining stuff is a lot of the remaining stuff is about the error reporting and error handling, which is, yeah, most of the time this is the most complex part of your code. So this is the one we talked about, how to report. So we, so we made some partial progress on this. And this not yet. This will get a bit more complicated by what we dis discussed now, but I'm leaning towards having, I'm leaning, leaning towards having some kind of printf like callback to do the actual outputting because I want, yeah, this is, this is also important and also why it's it's useful to to really make this as comfortable as possible for the developer because i also want this to have this as a debug print um, option this can i think this will be extremely helpful if you can some somewhere in your code you can just call a function and say give me the context of, of where we are currently at and then do some print devs and stuff uh, so we could get something like that, that tells us where we're at see the context and so on and so that that can be I think very valuable so here I think yeah these are just questions this is not to implement something I'm just indicating where my tendency is currently yeah, this is already closed, so this is this is closed. This is almost closed. I think I will probably not change my opinion here. How to deal with the multiple substreams operating on one parent stream? We will keep this. I think we will keep this simple cooperative kind of multitasking and multi streaming multi streaming mode. Yeah, this and this is so this is about the error reporting and both of the last points. So maybe even half of the points are yeah, also this is about the error reporting here. So I think half of the points are actually about the error reporting system. And I really care a lot of, about good error reporting. It makes life so much easier and it saves so much time in the end. So might the time we spend here might look like a lot of time, but first it's not frustrating kind of time because there are also different qualities of time, right? And if you, uh, debugging and you are uh, turning over every single byte and you just for hours and you don't find the problem that's very frustrating time to spend but designing something like what we talked about that's good quality time to spend so that's the first difference and also the amount of time I think in the end it just always pays to to have good error reporting, it saves so much time in the end.
yeah, this, ad this additional context data thing This can, I mean, this will depend very much on the kind of stream we are working in, how difficult this is. For an in-memory stream, it's trivial. For a file stream, it's still rather easy. So all kinds of easy and random access streams, this is quite an easy thing to do. For non-random access, this could be much more difficult to do, but maybe then we just don't do it and we don't, um, we don't provide additional context, maybe. Ah, this reminds me of one thing. That would be extremely interesting because I think what would be even, even greater is now we have this hierarchical context. We also have the flat context, but they are not really connected to each other. Right now, it might be. So if we don't have a, a compressed, so if we don't have intermediate legacy, it might be extremely useful to also indicate, indicate in this context, let's just for, for um, trying things out, shorten this a bit because we will have some, we already have, and we will have something like a pointer here pointing to the error and in addition to that, so to make this much clearer. Um, it would be really, really great to have, if these, these boundaries here, if they are close enough to be inside this context, it can be extremely helpful to do something like this, to say that here actually, this is the start of the, let's say, JB2 text segment. Something like this would be absolutely great. To connect the, the, hierarchical, the hierarchical context with the flat context. And not difficult to do, I think, in the end, because you always must consider that none of this has to be fast, because this is only used either when we have an error, which, since we are not a compiler, something we, we do not consider a normal use case, or during debugging, where we um, it's not that we don't care about speed in debugging, we do, but if we produce output, then we don't care about this because output is slow anyway and we cannot consume, as a human, we cannot consume too much output anyway. So um, either way, it's not performance critical, so none of this will be hard to implement. The thing is just, you need the, the data, so you need you need just the, the hardest part is to know what text do we put here? Where do we get this from? Where do we get this text and the look and, and the, the byte offset from? Because as soon as you have this, this is relatively trivial to to implement. So um, that's just something we need to think about. Do we have these? Should we, for example, should we, should we do more, should we do some numbering here to make the reference more clear? Because we could, of course, have something, I mean, we could have something starting here, blah, blah, blah. So how do we do this? Um, I 
We could do something more compact in between the hexadecimals. Would also be an option. We could even interleave with the hierarchical reporting. Even that would be possible. So uh, what I mean is we could do something like this to say, okay, let's say uh, this part of the context is actually not inside the X object stream, let's say. And then we have a few bytes in the X object stream. And then we start we start the segment and there we have the problem. Something like this uh, would also be possible. It's just looking very confusing, I think. Could line breaks could line breaks could be also used for do something like this that we say here we start the X object for example and here we start the yeah that's okay that's maybe a bit that's maybe a bit ambiguous just brainstorming So this would be no longer a completely flat context. This would be a a flat context split up by hierarchical um, data structure and stream information. Of course, I mean, the use of that is limited because very often these boundaries will not be close enough to really appear in the flat context. But on the other hand, if you parse headers or so, you, you often have at least one, one of these boundaries here. So having something like this would not be unusual. That would not be unusual. Maybe very nice to have. Especially because there's one thing to consider that the current position, that's actually also one thing to design maybe a bit better. The current position is not too reliable in some cases. The problem being that all of our parsing and decoding um, it uses two different ways to look at the data depending on which way makes the, the code easier. So it's just opportunistically selecting one of two ways, namely um, uh, looking ahead a bit or complaining after the fact. So sometimes you look ahead, typically only at the next byte, and you say, okay, we have a problem or not. And then when you report, the error position is actually really at the, at the byte that causes the problem. But often you also, for example, you parse a header and then you parse a header and then you do some consistency checks. And if you then report, an error, the location might still be helpful because it points you in the, in the right area of the file, but it might actually point after the bytes that caused the problem. This would, first this would make this, this feature a lot more, more useful than it would otherwise already be. Um, it also opens the question if we should actually invest more, so take more care to report better error positions because we could of course 
tell to the error function, okay, don't report the current stream position, but report uh, 12 bytes back where you start with the header parsing, for example. That's something we can easily add afterwards, by the way, because all of that, what we're talking about here now, all of that needs only two kinds of information. One is a position in the stream, and this does not have to be the current position, it could also be an arbitrary position. Um, it's just, it, it matters a bit whether it is within the buffer data or not, but this is a, a topic we need to deal with anyway. Uh, so it needs the position and it needs the nesting of the data streams, and this is there anyway. So un unless we actually go out of the dynamic scope of one of the substreams, we have these substreams around for doing the reporting. So something like this might not be too unreasonable. Maybe only for binary data that is, is printed in hexadecimal. Because we have two modes, we also have a, a text mode that uses text and escape sequences. And then this would be very confusing. So, but, but for text, we, we, we can orient ourselves more easily anyway, normally. So this is really only important for the binary data. So once again, the question, do we have something that we can implement right away without sleeping for a night over the ideas? This is actually already done. This was a very nice thing that we could. Let's check how, how many things are actually about the error reporting. This one. This is all done, or uh, we need, just need some documentation here. Um, this, I would say, is done. Then this is, has become moot. This is about the error reporting. 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 This is This is just that we confirmed our current design is closed. This is something else. Not not even that. No, it's it's loosely related also to. It's loosely related. Even that is related to error reporting somewhat. Yeah, this is something else. I think it's mostly okay that we just confirmed our current current design. And this is again about error reporting. So actually 
almost everything that is still open is about this error reporting stuff. Oh, now I there's something that we can do a quick implementation just so that we have also written some code in this in this episode. We do have an uncleanliness currently regarding this, the data stream system. So currently we do not have a data stream implementation that just implements a memory buffer. And we, we do have one, but that is at the same time our test data stream. The test data stream currently does practically only that, but it will do more in the future because it will do things like randomizing the fetch chunk sizes that it returns in order to stress the, the downstream code. It will also pr provide fault injection for, for our testing, for fast testing and so on. So it's really not about the memory stream. The memory stream is something that that we just want to have something very simple. So we just want something like an array data stream that is just, just an array in memory. Should we call it array data? Yeah, I think that's, that's okay. So that would be derived from data stream and it will just have the, this would have a buffer size, which we could call an array size in this case, actually. I'm, I thought about deriving test data stream from this one, but I'm not sure because Test data stream will really behave quite differently than array data stream because array data stream will make your life as easy as possible and test data stream will make your life as hard as possible. So th those are two different things. Yeah, I mean, array data stream will, re as a public interface, I think it will only have this init function. And it will, of course, it will implement, it will implement some of the, or maybe even all of the, because it's the easiest data stream. Oh no, again, again, I, why is alternate files sometimes not working for this header? I don't get that. That's so annoying. So, implementing this should really be quite trivial. So this will be much easier. Yeah, why not zero it? Don't need to be super fast probably. Set array size, set the buffer. Also that is different. So array data stream will really, will not copy the array. It will just use what the array that you give, it, give to it. Um, We actually, we want a buffer. We maybe we could accept, we could accept array size zero probably shouldn't, shouldn't make, shouldn't create problems. No coping here. So pointer is buff and is, 
No, and is buff plus array size. Offset is zero, and then we just fill in the functions, and that's it. And the functions will be, of course, very simple. So actually, fetch fun. Yeah, we do need a fetch function, but it will be a no op. I actually probably do want to put these. Maybe I shouldn't do these impl namespaces or something like this. I should probably do an anonymous namespace for stuff that should remain local. It's just that it's visible to the rest of the file. Okay, this I think fetch always takes a status object and the data stream itself. And this will literally, literally do nothing what else do we do um, fetch backwards likewise will do nothing then we will have a um, advance Oh, we already hit an interesting question because, I mean, the thing is something like advanced that just advances the stream pointer by a certain number of bytes will always be trivial to implement for the array data stream. The thing is, I actually think I want to handle these trivial cases directly in the interface functions. So in the, in the, in the generic data stream functions and not even call this one. But I mean, this would be really quite trivial. So the only thing we would need to check here is if offset is, would advance us uh, beyond the end of the stream, then we have a problem, but otherwise otherwise we just do pointer plus equals offset and that's it. Trying to advance the stream pointer plus. <laughs> oh, this is unclear. Trying to advance the data stream pointer by blah 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 bytes, but the array has only bytes left. I think that's clear, right?
let's call it an array stream or something, array stream from the bar. But the array has only blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we need our, our idiom here for, for the error checking. Maybe I will decide on some more compact way to write this. Currently we are a bit redundant here with the returns and so on. But I like this because I can immediately see what does this function do in case of failure it just returns. So, so this was advanced. Seek will be very similar. Extremely similar, actually. Not that similar. <laughs> Actually, we don't even need the array size. We don't even need the array size member. That's redundant. That is actually redundant. Actually, something about which I'm a bit picky. I shouldn't write bytes because for a single byte, this is not correct. Trying to set position pos. I mean, maybe it would be wiser to do just a parenthesis around the S, like it's often done, to not surprise people who want to parse something, but yeah, I don't know. I just like to be clean here. So we have advanced, we have seek, we have fetch backwards. Uh, what else do we need? Let's just seek, advance, fail context and yield. Yeah, yield we don't need. Yield will be no op and yield is by default a no op so that we don't need. But a fail context we will need. And this is the thing we are currently working on. So we will not Uh, 
not do anything fancy here. So this mainly currently it expects us to call a fail call with some description of the array. Um, just do something like this. So we want the length which is n minus both. That's that's what all that we need, I think, here currently. I mean, this will get a uh, fail context of n. That's currently all we need. And I think that's a complete implementation currently of an array data buffer. It's completely trivial except for maybe the error handling, which is almost trivial. Uh, should we should we report the array pointer here? Uh, probably not because it changes every time and so not so nice to report. Offset yeah, offset will always be zero, this will be fixed. So let's see if we compile and then let's let's use this array data stream in the one place where we currently have a very unclean unclean use. Okay, we have the yeah we will cast this because this is known to be always this is known to be always non-negative, which we could assert here, but I think that's so simple that's Yeah, same here. Array size does no longer exist, so this is just plus n. Okay, so yeah, let's just use it in our generator, which currently has this ugly, 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 ugly thing where it uses the this. So this should really use an array data stream. It's only used here, so no problem with the ownership of the array. Oh. 
No, this does not date status, so this cannot even fail. It's so simple, it cannot fail. Okay, so let's see if anything is still working. Ah, I need to I need to remove a intentional problem that I added before in the JBIG2 test. I need to again start at one here and I need to skip this invalid file because I was just triggering this this error response here to get something copy for our brainstorming. Okay, I think everything is working. Because if the Huffman coding in the JB2 test is working, then also this array data stream was working because we actually generated, which we can check, we generated, um, um, okay. I guess it's here, generated valid source code. Oh, where is that? Where does it generate the source code? Is it in CMake files? Where is this? I would have expected that it's here. Ah, it's here. Why did I not find this? Yeah, this looks just fine. Just fine. So a little a little uncleanliness removed. And something done. I mean that was not <laughs> not really spectacular, but it's a step. Oh, maybe we can clean this up too. Because that is actually exactly what, that is exactly what our array data stream does. The input is owned by, by this test. It's allocated by random data. So this is actually exactly what, so we tried to fake an array data stream here and now we can just use it. We free the input here. Yeah, that's fine. That should be just fine. So we could clean up another thing. Let's see if it works. It takes a little while, this fast test for the 100,000 error cases, or not, I think maybe 80,000 error cases or so. Still shouldn't take so long. So this is another thing we will do in one of the, maybe in one of the following streams or off stream is just to 
to fix some performance regressions in our unit testing or integration testing. That's actually one thing. I think it was probably not such a good thing overall that the unit testing became so prominent in testing overall, at least it's my impression. Because so often I think the best way to test is not unit test. And it depends a lot. I mean, sometimes good testing includes unit testing. Sometimes good testing is unit testing. Sometimes good testing does not include unit testing. And nowadays, I think in software circles, whenever you say test, the first thing people think about is probably unit tests and I don't know if that is really such a good thing. Okay, the fast testing passed. By the way, here you can see, let's maybe reduce the font size a bit. Here you can see lots of error messages that were actually not that many that were generated in fast testing. Oh, and I actually, <laughs> I already see a problem in my error messages. I forgot a space somewhere. An array data stream of so and so many bytes, blah, blah, blah. My serious circuits. Nice error messages. So that's also one thing I want to do in fast testing, not, not only to make sure that, that my code doesn't crash and that it reports errors, but that also the error messages look fine. So let's fix that and then we are done for today. That one is fine because yeah, it's, it's always because of these stupid formats that, that are so cumbersome to use. Yeah, here, that's the one. One could probably even, even do something like this, the search for spaces and then something like this and then a non-space. Let's see, how does this work, a non-space. Can we do something like this? Yeah. This works. So this one is okay. Okay. Maybe we could actually look for a word character. If we want to look for problems, we maybe want to, if we have something like, like something like a word character there, that would be a problem, but we don't have now. Okay, I'll start the final test run. We will not be patient enough to wait for its end. And 
with that i thank you for watching and i hope to see you again and see you next time bye